If you ever wanted to build a chair, then you're going to have to know splay, rake, resultant, and sightline angles. And if you don't, well, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you all about it right now on this episode of Wood Chopping Time. Hello, fellow Wood Chopperoos, Chad here. And recently I had to build a bench for a customer of mine. And the hardest thing about it was the angles for the legs. Now you heard me say that there was four different angles, so let me break it down and explain what each one is to you. One. Now the first angle we're gonna talk about, well that's splay. And splay is when you're looking at the chair or bench from the front. It has to do with how much of an angle the legs are kicked out. Two. So the second angle is rake. And rake is looking at the chair or the bench from the side view. And again, it has to do with how much the legs are kicked out. If you'll note that the back leg has more of a rake angle than the front. And that has to do with the placement of the hole where it was drilled. Three. So the third angle is the resultant angle. And what this is, is kind of a combination of both the splay, looking at it from the front, and the rake, looking at it from the side. So if you think about this here would be a uh, splay angle. This here is the rake angle. The combination of those two gives you your resultant angle. Now you would think that would be enough to drill this hole. But nope, hang on, there's one more. And this one is really crucial. Four. So after you have your resultant angle, you need your sight line angle. And what that is is essentially where you're positioning your drill bit to make the hole for the leg. If you don't know the sight line you should be looking down, it's gonna, after you drill this hole, it's gonna throw both the rake and the splay off wildly. So the position of where you actually place your drill bit and start drilling is crucial. So now you understand what the four angles are. And if you're working off plans or drawings, those angles are probably included on that for you. However, in my case, I was working with a picture from the internet. I had no measurements at all. So where did I get started with? Well, two things I know. One is I don't want the legs to stick out farther than the side or the front of the bench. That becomes a tripping hazard and it doesn't look as nice. So with this in mind, I decided where I wanted my hole placement to be and from there, I used the straight edge to come down there. And so the, the uh, splay on this, I have at about 11 degrees. I did the same thing for the side, and I came up with a rake around 8 degrees. So that is where I got started with. And I'll show you the next step. So I have my starting point. I have my splay angle and I have my rake angle and I have to figure out now my resultant and sight line. Now I'm going to do this with a little bit of geometry. Now I will say that this is super easy to do on a program like SketchUp but I would highly recommend that you take notes and actually draw this out so you have a good point of reference to use when it's time to figure out your chair angles. Alright so let's take a look here. So I have a circle drawn out and this line coming across and up, well that's going to represent the chair height. And in this case, not that it matters, but my chair height was 19 inches. All right, the first angle that I'm going to figure out is my splay. And I said my splay was at 11 degrees. So I'm going to take this protractor and place that on there and go up to 11 degrees. 
and I'm going to draw a line all the way through that. And to help keep this clear, I'm going to color code this. So let's make the splay yellow. Splay. Okay, I said my uh, rake angle was at 8 degrees. So I'll put this on here again. Again, I'll draw my line. Let's color code this one pink. Okay, so now here's where it has to really pay attention. What I want to do is I want to figure out the resultant angle. And what that means is this line from this point and this point need to connect. So I need to do that at 90 degrees. Okay, right here, right here, that is the point that I want to be at. Okay, so from what I'll do now is I'm going to connect this point to that point. So basically I'm splitting my, my um, rectangle in half. Now coming 90 degrees off of that, come up to the outer edge of my circle, and now from this circle down to that point, let's connect to that again. And that is, right in here, that is my resultant angle. So I'm going to color code that. And if I put my protractor on there, and this is really where SketchUp is nice because SketchUp is really precise and it would tell me spot on. Um, and I had figured it out at 13 and a half degrees. So that resultant angle, remember, is the combination of my splay and my rake. Gives me the resultant. Now the last thing I have to figure out is my sight line. And the sight line is this one here that that cut that rectangle in half. So I can just extend this out a little just so you can see. This one here, if I was to, and I've run out of colors, um, let me use the yellow again. If I measured the distance between these two right in here, put my protractor on that and measure it and I come out to 54 degrees. So there's my four angles. And so by using geometry I was able to figure out all four of those angles to make when I drill it very precise. This was a method that my friend Dennis Laney showed me when we were working on some chairs together. And so I thought I would pass it on to you. 
Now, I definitely will say that you're probably going to have to re-watch this video a couple of times to go through the steps and make sure you really grasp it. And I would say that if you are watching it, maybe follow along by drawing it. If not, uh, I'll try and have this available on the website so you can download or screenshot for free. All right, now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take these angles and properly lay them out to the seat and then drill those holes. I'm going to show you two different methods for drilling it. One is going to be on the drill press and how you got to set that up and get everything positioned. And then the second is how to do it with a jig instead. Okay, well I know it was a lot of information to take in, but I do appreciate you watching as always. And of course, when you're done practicing this, keep on dancing.